on Pure Country Reacts, we are going to try something new. It's called the Social Justice Warrior Do Not Cringe or Laugh Challenge. TikToks. Now, these are TikTok videos, and these are sort of kind of hard to painstakingly go through and try to find these cringe-worthy videos. So we did manage to find some compilations on YouTube, and what we're going to do is, Lexi and myself, usually we can pretty much keep a pretty straight face but some stuff will make you laugh and some stuff will make you cringe and something's got to be you know pretty out there to make me cringe uh normally not much gross stuff does that but these won't be gross these are just going to be the social justice warriors and i'm pretty excited um to see some of this stuff and i don't know um social justice warriors i think they sort of kind of uh, speak out on uh, many different things. You know, it might be women's issues. It might be abortion. It might be, I don't know. Um, BLM. BLM. I'm not really sure what we're going to look at. We're going to be going in blind so we can do, honestly, uh, cringe or laugh. We're gonna, so we're going to try to do neither one of those. And this is the first time we've ever did uh, any type of reaction where we're going to try not to do a laugh or a cringe or something because typically she and I can pretty well keep a straight face. You can go through our videos and there's really only one video that we have and it's one of our news bloopers where I actually laughed until I hardly couldn't even speak anymore and my chest hurt. Um, and that doesn't happen a whole lot. But anyway, I don't mind trying to do something uh, and trying to keep the cringe face. So we're going to try to do this honestly. So we're going in blind. We hope you enjoy. Let's get to the social justice warrior TikToks. Double seeing glasses, fucking. We're going to have to. Your partner says they're. They're not hot. He it. When your partner says they are not hot, he it. Okay, go ahead. I don't. I don't Put it. on my fucking double seeing glasses because I can't even begin to see the amount of. Bullshit. What's the CD stitches are doing? So fat patient body positivity won't save her from heart attacks. When you tell fat patient body positivity won't say, oh, so this is the fat phobics, so I, I guess. Started it so you guys can see what it okay, is so this before. must be a fat phobic thing, um, because we're trying to figure this out as we go along since we are blind. When you tell a fat patient body positivity won't say for, oh, well, I mean, that's it's true, true mm -hmm. considering obesity is one of the number one contributors for heart attacks, diabetes, strokes, strokes um, high blood pressure. Yeah, joint issues, Bone back issues. issues. I mean, it really does, but hey, to each his own. Let's see, let's see what her woke says. It hopefully gets taken down. This video made me so unbelievably angry. Imagine being a doctor and being so insensitive to the effects of weight stigma and imagine not knowing that weight stigma and weight-based bullying is a thing that not only affects pause, people's pause, mental pause. telling a person to be healthier so they can live longer is not bullying it's, a fat yeah person. it's not a phobia and it's not a bullying I mean, is i'm not i'm not afraid of fat people i've had eight or nine friends who were way bigger than me I don't care about your body weight. I um, want you to be healthy. As, as long oh, yeah. as you are healthy, that's not bullying you. Yeah, no. So I don't get. I don't. And get I think that a lot of times people just really because losing weight, and this is coming from a person who has been on many different diets. Um, just a little backstory. Uh, before COVID, I was on a keto diet, and then we got COVID. It's a lot harder to do. Uh, well. I've not been able to get back into my regular rhythm of what I was eating and not eating, so I have managed to put my weight back on. So I'm going to get back on another diet. But that being said, I wanted to do it for myself and 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 for my health. You know, I do have a daughter, I do have a husband, so um, I don't see how it's bullying. Um, do, doing a diet is really hard, and I can't say that it's not. It's extremely hard. It's really you, hard. It's hard on the body. It's hard on the mind, but it's for your health benefits. But you have to be in that mindset and dedicated to do it in order to sort of kind of make it work. You have to be set on it. So, uh, almost to the effect of like uh, when a smoker decides, I want to quit smoking. If they're not going to use any assistance, any kind of nothing to help them quit smoking, then they're going to have to basically get it in their mind that, hey, I'm going to quit smoking. So it really just takes, you know, a lot 
um, effort. of effort and to actually get behind that and keep that in your mind. So losing weight is really sort of kind of the same thing because you're used to sort of eating what you want to. And I love eating what I want to. I mean, seriously, I do. But I got to right exactly. Carbs <laughs> are our friends, but on keto they are not our friends. So, but um, I don't see it as bullying. That's just an opinion. Um, we don't really have any phobias about anything. We accept anybody any color any height any shape any size any nationality i mean, any one of my friends is is big and i don't see her any different than i would looking at a person who's skinnier than me i just i just don't really see we do we way. we accept everybody we really have i mean she's had um friends that are um trans bi gay lesbian pansexual pansexual I've had atheist she's sat had satanist friends. atheist friends satanist friends i've had some muslim friends agnostic i've, I mean, I've, I've been friends with everybody I, I, real, I really don't care. And, um, I'm good with everybody. And so we just, just treat me with respect. Right. And we identify as Christian um, because, I mean, we, we, we are Christian, um, even though we're not perfect. But we just usually accept everybody. If we're, you know, if you're good to us, we're good to you. You know, it's almost like, hey, um, treat everybody the way you want to be treated. And we just always tried to do that. So I, back to this, though, I don't really see see how a doctor telling somebody they needed to lose weight because it was a health issue i don't really see that as a bullying but somebody may i don't know dieting is hard it really is hard but if you want to make a change you can and if you don't want to make a change just tell your daughter i want to stay this way and be unhealthy i mean you know it's between you and your doctor right well but affects people's physical health as well and as a doctor <laughs> you should care about both of those things and not understanding why some fat people don't feel comfortable going to the doctor when they have a condition like you are the problem you are the reason why so many people don't get the treatment and care that they need i gotta try to make sure that i don't cringe i'm just doing the eyes down and believe for their weight by their health care providers this is not a joke. We don't make fun of people's bodies. We don't make fun of people's weights. I've never seen a doctor make fun of a I've body. I've never made either. him, but I've never seen that themselves. or heard that. I don't care if you're a doctor. This is God. Isn't that big friends ever Okay, so let's talk about confusing capitalism with feminism. This is particularly prevalent in white feminism. So we have to remember that a woman being in a position of power isn't inherently feminist, especially if that power is being used to oppress or harm marginalized groups of people. Trying to make your way to the top of a capitalist system that was set up by white cis het men to benefit white cis het men. I'm. I don't. I don't have any words. That wasn't even English. I don't think. I'm. I think one thing that really sort of kind of bothers me with the liberals and the feminists of today. Leftists. The leftists. They they speak they speak regarding it, they don't look at their color or their sex and they weigh in on things I don't really think they should be weighing in on. She's talking about a woman in power is not feminism if the woman in power is oppressing. The white cis men are the ones you know that's right. Really but then there's all, her stuff is about white women. Does she not have a mirror? Hmm. And in turn oppress marginalized groups and the working class is not synonymous with a movement that's supposed to be about equality. We have to remember that the patriarchy and capitalism are intrinsically linked. Okay, I think what the problem is is she sounds British. And that's actually one thing that a lot of American people will say is if you're from another country, we don't really want your your opinion. Don't later. don't give an opinion about a country that that you don't if live you in. If you're from Britain and you've moved here and you've lived here for several years, then sure. But if you don't presently live here as a legal citizen and you don't understand how our government works and how our economy works, I don't really want to hear your. And opinion. I think too the fact that the feminists of today are not the feminist. They're Back not, in the day. They're not true feminists. The original feminists. What feminism was actually really about was empowering women and, and, equality. and equality for women. And now, I'm not even sure what the they days feminists are, are about. They are trying to dehumanize men. And they're trying to say that all men are rapists now. So, oh. um, that's so basically feminism of the day. Feminism is accusing a group of it's, people uh, of crimes. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta look up So, that. okay, listen. So, feminism of today is accusing a, a, a group of people of crimes they have not committed based on 
some acts by that person's color. I, last time I checked, I thought all that, um, races of men have been known to rape. Not all men, but yeah, there's some all from races. all races and nationalities. Is this does that not happen anymore? I'm confused. And really, if that was the case, then why do any, why does any of the feminists of today? leave the house if that was the case yeah i mean if it's like a rapey culture i would be afraid to leave the house but the 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 word i'm thinking of uh, today's feminism is uh they represent miss misandry massage massage oh misandry you're right misandry i didn't get this like misogyny or no that's right because she's if you want to look it up it's m-i-s-a-n-d-r-y Misandry is the opposite of misogyny. Basically, it is the hate and dislike for men and disrespect of men. And, and that is today's And feminism. really, the, yeah, that, that's not the old feminists, the ones who are actually out marching and fighting. And, and really, the, if you wanted to be a true feminist, Americans, we are fine. We're already equal with men, and they actually get more rights than men today. How about you go to these other countries where women are being oppressed? Exactly. Where they don't have any rights. Like in Pakistan right now or uh, Afghanistan. Go go or there and protest. Iran and, yeah, places like go that. Go there and protest. That, they, yeah. they, they need it. Yeah. We don't. Go, go and you do that because the thing is, is here in America, as far as I know. We're already equal. We are already equal. We can do anything that we want to do as long as we are trained to do that. I mean, it's I don't get it. Like I said, go to countries that need it, not the countries that already have They're it. not original feminists. So the feminists of today, I don't really look at them as feminists. I look at them as sort of kind of like a, a mental instability class of people. Because when you try to put down someone else based on their sex or their gender or their color, that's could be you know uh, racism. That could be a sexism. phobia, sexism. I mean. It, it could be a lot of things, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's like a lot of the feminism today is very judgy. I mean, I don't. I know they, they do. They, they, they link everyone together in one boat. They do, and nobody wants to be put together in one basket, you know, because a lot of times in in a basket of fruit, you have different kinds, or yeah. you can have a basket of one fruit, but every fruit that's in there is not the same because you know you reach into a, a basket of apples, and there might be a. Uh, an that apple happened. with a, a bad sp- spot on it. You can't you can't judge everybody by the actions of a couple of people. We're still not cringing. We don't mean to weigh in on this, but sometimes this is there's just some so, talk. Sometimes you, you just need to there's some talk t- over the end there's some groups. talking points that you know just I mean just opinions. All trying to cultivate a work life balance and productivity culture and capitalism doesn't care about that. For anybody, yes, but it does. especially Otherwise, women, women wouldn't be in the workforce in general. <laughs> so if your feminist goal is to be a hashtag girl boss, I think it's important to reflect on why in the I've never heard of, that of saying. gender equality. Well, because the thing is, is feminism, genuine feminism, was empowering women. Not certain women, women. And not women to be hating other people. It was to uplift, support, and to... Um, empower women so if a woman wants to be a hashtag girl boss and she makes it there no letter that's that's a win for for women for true feminist not liberal feminist not, not the problem with this feminist movement gang. and that's another thing too with capitalism the whole purpose there is capitalism in the world is because people come to america in order to uh realize the american dream which might be starting your own business being able to be free to make the choices for that business having a home having children having freedom to do what you want to do so your money right capitalism is a good thing and that's funny too is because people who are who hate capitalism and want socialism are the same people who keep apple in business when they have their macbooks and their iphones and they're and they're going to starbucks daily and they're getting their seven dollar grande coffees but they hate capitalism it's it's hilarious it's like it's uh you're benefiting off capitalism but you hate capitalism exactly people should wonder why they're so committed to reclaiming a movement that was so steeped in white supremacy in white women's privilege and in white feminism in general when there are poc fronted bands and poc artists who actually uphold intersectional feminism there are poc punk bands who make politically motivated music well, there's a lot of music that's politically motivated. Has anybody ever listened to an Iron Maiden song? 
uh, Rage Against the Machine. I mean, come on, there's a lot of political songs out there. I mean, heck, Kid Rock even sang some political songs. That's, that's literally been our music industry for years. Forever. And I mean, it, hell, the music back in the 70s. Oh, my gosh. Including today's hip-hop and pop artists. Yeah. They, they all do that stuff. A lot I, of, there's... A lot of it, although I don't really I don't, care for I don't it. get what she's complaining about. I'm a little lost, too. Maybe we're not understanding. You can leave in the comments what we're missing. I don't know. But, hey, I do like some Rage Against the Machine, though. But, yeah, they're, they're pol po political songs far wide and as back as far as you can go and still going strong. People aren't actually interested in questioning how white feminism harms women of color, how it's dangerous to queer and trans people. People just want justification to listen to music that was made by some shitty people, which they could they could just. I, I don't get how this white feminism person. I, I'm is. confused too. So now she's a woman who's criticizing white feminist. So now this, I guess she, I don't know if she's supposed to be a feminist or not. But so she's supposed to be a feminist, but she's putting the white feminist in a basket and no. one basket together that's really never a good thing because you can't judge and everybody really, by the actions of a few and really saying white feminist is very racist saying what well, white feminist that's yeah. very and racist. the thing is i think we really need to get past what our eyes see and and get more to how we should be treating each other okay i, I don't know but if if you all stand for something then that's a group Okay, but when you start picking and choosing who's allowed in this group, you got you got problems. I mean, I don't understand a lot of this woke agenda anyway. You pick and choose who can be in it, and then you pick and choose some of the same people who can't be in it. But, I, and, and really, I don't get why these people say that this group oppresses this group without giving me the logic or the reasons or the evidence as to how this group supposedly oppresses you. I don't get it. I don't, like I said, I don't get any evidence of that. So, basically, all you're saying is hearsay, and hearsay basically means nothing. Yeah, hearsay is just that hearsay. And like I said, I'm, I'm not getting a good vibe for her just because she has brought out the race card. I have never been about racism at all. And that goes for every single person I ever meet. If I know you're a racist, I don't want anything to do with you. Nope, exactly. Just do quietly, like without any fuss. So if you're actually interested in making your feminism <laughs> intersectional or listening to politically motivated music that isn't deeply problematic, I suggest you look up Sister Girls Riot. Oh, I can't read all that. These. Okay, Alice Bag people and the bags and the ba van coop so oh okay so basically what she's saying is is white if if we're a white feminist then if we want to listen to music it needs to be all black music because that's that's what i'm uh, saying that's, that's supposedly here. not political affiliated but yet those people also do political based so stuff. her political music is better than white feminist political music as that's, that's that's an opinion. That's beyond racist. I mean, yeah, it's racist, but it's just an opinion. I can't uh, these. I don't know if I can cringe or laugh at some of these people. I'm waiting for something. I'm I not, have I'm to. I'm not cringing. Just it no, really irritates it, me. It, yeah, maybe we should have done a "Don't Get Irritated" challenge. Yeah. Well, a blinked. Can you do it? Blinked. I'm so confused. What's going on? I'm confused too. What are we talking about? I blinked. The tattoos don't make sense on you, hon. Uh. Oh. Okay, I just saw armpit mm -hmm. hair. Do you see this person next to me? He is my friend. No, I don't. I. I don't. Does anybody stand in there? Is, is, is there? is there a spirit standing next to you? Do you see this person next to me? He is. E. See, there's a pronoun that they're already using, E. Okay, but I don't see anybody next to her. Basically, E's supposed to be like a he pronoun. But I don't see him. Is he it, invisible? I guess it's the, the, the right side of her face. Okay, well, just play it. Let's see what's <laughs> going on here. C has had to put up with a lot to get to where Purr is today. I just want to let Glint know that Thon is valid, that verb pronouns are valid, and that Sarah identity is valid. That's half of those pronouns already. You've already heard like five or six of them already. And, and they're all different. It, there's nothing made any sense. Like I said, th this is destroying language. I wish Void all the best and look forward to maybe even seeing some of their lovely content someday. Please 
Treat them with respect, and I'm sure A will respect you, too. Destroying language completely. You, uh, you can't talk to people now, otherwise you'd, you'd probably mispronoun them and they'd want to stab you in the neck. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't know. Maybe we should make a business where we can come up with these buttons to wear, and they have the different little pronouns on them, and then that way when they decide to change their pronoun, they, they just change their button. button. The, yeah, I don't know. This is supposed to be a teacher, right? I don't care. You are supposed to teach children about math, history, science, not human biology. They are not they're not to that age yet to understand it or comprehend it. And you need to keep your your political pronouns. and gender pronouns to yourself. That is not their concern. They're not supposed to no. validate and what you And it's going to confuse a child, especially if you look like a man or if you look like a woman and they say Miss something, Mr. something. But, of course, obviously, if they're going by pronouns, used to when you go to class on the first day of school, they would write their name up there. I am Miss Smith. I am Mr. Bixby or whatever. So... Basically, a child is not supposed to validate what you think about you. They are supposed to learn for that class that year and then move on. That, exactly. That, that's, that's the business. So, if they if you want them to call you by your first name, you just write your first name on the board. Um, your last I, name? Just last well, name? Well, I mean, or you could do that. That thing is... Kids, if they're taught correctly, are going to say Mr. Something or Miss Something. It's not, I don't know. Is that a respect? It, yeah, it it's is. Not, and not kids teach. need to be taught to respect their elders. And the, and the thing is, is, if you were to try to teach them about this stuff, it's going to be mad confusing. Especially the fact, if you were to ask a child at five years old what they want to eat at a, a diner, they will sit there for 45 minutes trying to decide what they want to eat. Yeah. And so you really want this person who can't comprehend things at that level. They're trying to learn how to spell their name. They're trying to learn two plus two. But you want them to comprehend gender and sexuality. Yeah. They're not supposed to be taught sex until they start getting to puberty. Yeah, which is about fifth or sixth grade. And typically they don't think about sex then because you know what my mom was telling me about my puberty around third grade or fourth grade. <laughs> you know what I asked her? Can I go play now? Is it? I well, did this stuff at five. But the thing is, is uh, going back to what she said, her doctor, her baby doctor, even though it's not, she wasn't a baby, has said that I probably needed to go ahead and have the period talk with her and not to give her more information than she needed. So I, I did. I went ahead and had the period talk with her, which I tried to explain because, and the doctor had put it this way, that way when kids, well, a lot of people see blood, they freak out. So instead of possibly embarrassing another little girl who may get up and have some blood on her go ahead and explain what might be going on where it won't be a shock kind of a thing and what she said is true i explained to her what it was and um, I looked at her blankly. she did she was looking at me i said do you have any questions and she said can i go play now i mean kids can't comprehend it they don't care mm -mm. they don't understand it so why force it and push it and confuse them and give them mentality exactly issues. exactly and really um and if, and if you really think they can comprehend it i would rather you take a college psychology class and they will tell you what their brains can comprehend at each age level and i think that's why actually a lot of these people are sort of kind of implanting themselves implant it because they'll learn it's because way. they want to push this on little kids who cannot decide if they want to be a dinosaur today or wonder woman tomorrow but yet they, that that will make them have depression and suicidal thoughts yeah Let's move it along. Then get out of the school system. Yeah, you don't really there's need no to be. Such thing as non-intersectional activism, not even from a moral standpoint. And there's interlocking forms of oppression, but more specifically, the different structures of oppression will literally work to uphold and support each other. For example, whenever racism or sexism gets brought up, there's always some type of meritocracy, capitalist argument going on in support of either. Now, I don't. I don't even care what kind of gibber she's talking about, but I love her makeup. Her makeup yeah, looks really I was good. sitting here thinking about it. I really did like her, her makeup eye makeup. Is, her makeup is gorgeous. It, I mean, I love it. I mean, everything goes well together, but like that, I, I, I don't, I don't understand what she's talking about. But yeah, I don't know. I think people bashing on capitalism needs to go to a socialist country for a year, and then come back and see if you like the capitalism I mean, because anymore. I'm, I'm thinking there was a Indian conservative woman that had visited one of the socialist countries, I think, for a week. And I think it was because it was a trip or something that one of her friends wanted to do. And she said that she didn't even want to stay that week because of how awful it was there. Because mm. they went to one of the restaurants and they were 
I think they were trying to get a certain meal, but they said, we, the only thing we have here is mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, they had these menu items, but you couldn't choose that. The only thing they had was mashed potatoes. So, everybody ate mashed potatoes. So, um... I can't remember what country they said they I can't remember to. either. It's on, it's on tip of my tongue. But, but like I said, her, her makeup is very gorgeous. She's a very gorgeous woman. But I, I, like I, said, I don't get what she's talking about. <laughs> Racism has always had patriarchy stats with splitting up a movement that should involve over 51% of the population. And don't even get me started on how patriarchy constantly... Impacts. And like I said, and I, and I really want to say this, America, there's there's not just a couple of racist people in America. There's racist people everywhere in every country. Oh, yeah. So... I don't understand why they, they, they pivot that the USA is this racist country, especially when everyone wants to move here. I think, yeah, I, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't come run into a very, very racist place. And it's because it's not racist and it's because of the freedoms that we have here. So, really, the argument is sort of kind of not even it's valid. Not. Yeah, it's so, not. Like I said, there's racist people everywhere in the world. So yep. Okay. You, you can't get away from that. And demasculizes black men, which also supports white supremacist ideals that go back to the plantation as the slave master being a gentle father to his slaves but unless your activism actively combats each and every single one of these forms of oppression then your activism at most is going to be a road bump oh well you'd almost have to uh, agree i mean because that i think that was probably one of the points you'd made before if you're a feminist but you have nothing to say about about other countries, other countries that need it Oh, well, I'll have to agree with that. Silence is still violence. I don't know what's going on in Poland. I hadn't really heard a whole lot. But there are a bunch of other countries countries out there that do have um, human rights violations and mistreat women, too. I've heard of China, heavily China, because several women who have been in those concentration camps against Muslims have been uh, sexually abused for a long time. Then there's Poland. I think I've heard a couple of things about the sexual violence there. Brazil is heavily sexually violent against women and men are not prosecuted. Uh, and I'm thinking a couple of the countries, especially in the, the Middle East, yes, are heavily... Some women in Middle Eastern countries don't even have women's rights at all. They don't have women's rights at all. And really they the have no is, rights. The, the, the thing is, is a woman can be raped and the thing is, is it's her fault. So they, they, they stone her. Mm -hmm. Or it's, they punish her. There or they some, murder her. There's some really weird laws in other countries. So, so if, don't tell me that we are sexist here in America. I, I want to march with you in countries where women are being oppressed and where they're being abused and people aren't doing anything. Do that there. We have it here already. Yes. And you're wasting your voice on people who already have it. Yes. So, I'll agree with that. I will agree with that. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah. As you can see, my skin is white, something I am very ashamed All right, I'm convinced that 99% of people who actually complain about critical race theory have no idea what it is. Because what she described in her video is not at all critical race theory. I already made a video on this, so I'll just roll that clip. Critical race theory is basically a lens at which you can view history and how the systems and institutions within a society and country have affected certain groups becoming marginal. The CRT is basically telling black people today that because of white people and that they live and breathe, they are oppressors and black people will never do anything. They will never get past being oppressed. They are always going to be victims for the rest of their lives. And That's not a good way to make people And think. it's not really based on actual history, I wouldn't say, the, because, you know, they teach history. You can't focus on every single solitary person that uh, that experienced racism or abuse. Critical, I mean, there's so many instances. Critical race theory basically says that black people are still oppressed today, but like I said, in America, being racist and committing racist crimes is you are criminally criminally prosecuted for that right critical race theory the critical race theory basically says that everything that happens to people of color is brown all it's all the white people's fault and teaches white people that we are the bad guys and we are the oppressors and teaches black kids they're always going to be victims. that they're victims and that they can never bounce back from victimhood they can amount they can never amount to anything i mean and i would really be offended if i was a person of color and why would you tell black kids you will never Never amount to anything. Do you think that brings positivity on them? It really doesn't. And it's not true. I mean, because there's so many different this is a like a conversation that can't even really be had because there's so many different things that people can do. Uh it's just, you know, basically up to them if they want to try to do it. I mean groups throughout time. 
and the United States, that's obviously majority African American, but there are also, you know, other people of color, uh, indigenous groups included in critical race theory. But I want to address the most important point. This is not blaming current white people for everything that's happened. You are not responsible for the actions of those who came before you. However, you are responsible for your choice to ignore the consequences. And that is the major point. Okay, that makes zero sense at all. So basically, we don't need the consequences, but we need to be open about the consequences. Nobody's okay. ignoring anything. Everybody already admits to the fact that there were there was racism there was yeah there were slaves xyz but guess what there were slaves in other countries as too i think what gets ignored is the fact that america was not the only country who benefited from slaves now was that a morally right thing no it wouldn't it wasn't morally right to have people slaves even though that was at the time legal uh, yeah it was legal just because something is legal doesn't, doesn't it mean right. it right. doesn't make it right. And there's other countries who benefited from slavery. And there's other countries who still benefit from slavery. There were, there were countries that were, commit, that were that were involved in slavery before we were ever involved in slavery. And, and the fact is, is that the people in Africa, that was a tradition of theirs. They enslaved each other. And they even enslaved Christians from Britain before and, we did. And the thing is, is there's been other nationalities that were slaves as well so the thing is is slavery still goes on in some countries I mean, and, Ireland and it's slaves their own people one time there's slavery that still goes in other countries goes on in other countries and it's not going on here well yeah this it, it is but not not racial not not racial slavery what are you, what are you talking about child sex slaves trafficking that yeah well it's not the same thing obviously but i mean the thing is is we abolished slavery as a country over 400 years ago so um i think the thing is to learn from the sins of the past but not blame people who weren't alive when it was going on and people who were not existing when it was going and, on because i can tell you my family was not rich enough to own slaves and probably weren't even for slavery i'm sure they weren't and as we said before too it still goes on in other countries to this day and i don't know of anybody that's going to a country fighting for to free any of these people mm -hmm. and it's not just black people it's it can be any nationality it depends on the country quite frankly and i i really think this is the this is the biggest point that's always ignored is the fact that uh people in africa were the ones who kidnapped and sold their own people to us Yep. That is always ignored. Don't and, don't ignore that. They and, enslaved each other, and then they sold they they sold their own people. To and us. it still goes on too. It, it still goes on. It still over goes there. on, and it goes on in other countries too. I mean, and it's a terrible thing. I think everybody should be free, but not other other countries don't see things that well, way. I'm just saying, basically, America is not. And we're not the big bad guy. Yep. Critical race theory. That's for sure, Russ. Let me hear you. If trans Americans have the same rights as everyone else, let me hear you say, hell yeah. That should be all of you. They have the same rights as everyone else, so, <laughs> you know. Are we not ready for that, though? Are we just going to pretend like they don't so that someone feels special? Oh, okay, that's what we're doing? Okay, I'm confused. Cool. I'm really confused because they're human beings oh, that live in America. They have rights. You seem pretty upset that trans people have rights. Yeah. And if you're taking a little gander at your page, it seems that if your boy Trump was president and more people like you were in power, Trans people would have a lot less rights. Actually, no, that is not true. So mad. <laughs> oh, have mercy. I just have to say, okay, Trump ain't president no more, okay? Everybody needs to move on. He hasn't been president for two years, so let's stop regurgitating the past. Those were good days when the economy was awesome, and now you can't hardly pay for gas to get to work. Second, that guy has the biggest nostrils I think I've ever seen of a human. And Trump put in to trans people into government so he gave trans people rights he gave them a voice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um, um that's true that's anyway not true. i think probably what needs to be happening though people needs to go ahead and move on from the trump derangement syndrome thing he's not been in office in two years so if people don't have anything good to say about biden don't keep rehashing someone who hasn't been in office for two years. They need, okay? they need to voice the dislike they have for Biden instead, exactly. of, instead of voicing about a man who's not even who's not in anymore. office. He's not making you know he's not signing bills. He's not making executive orders. He's not tweeting mean th tweets. I mean, 
let's move on from that and and if you love your president and you love your government then you build them up if you don't have anything good to say him stop regurgitating trump he's he's not in office anymore it's it's a moot point let's and, move and, on. and really the fact is i'd rather have trump in office right now because we didn't have inflation when he was we really office. didn't so. but frustrating look how big his nostrils are that your conservative bigotry will be snuffed out in the future conservative bigotry oh. You can't see holes in the wall, like they're pretty big. And it was attached in like that. Hey there, hi, my name is Mercury, I'm the Trans Maintenance Lady. And I got so excited when I saw this question. I don't know why, cheese. but I saw two holes in the wall and I went, oh, I know how to do this, this is going to be fun. Those <laughs> teeth are, really, okay. and I can't hey, say so nothing. I have terrible teeth are, too. Uh, Chipmunk teeth, there we go. Yes. Anchors. You're going to get two of these and you're going to run these through the hole. Now, the way that these work are like this. So you are going to run your bolt through the hole of the, the toggle rack, right? And once you do that, you're going to put that little toggle end that's going to be like this, and you're just going to screw it in there. And then you're going to push it into the wall, and as soon as it's all the way through the wall, it's going to go like this. Woo! And then that's going to hold against the drywall, and then you're just going to tighten it up, and you do it to both of them at the same time, and then it's going to be perfect. You got it. It's going to be so easy. You're going to be so happy when you're done. I don't even get that one. Something that I see consistently play out throughout the behavior. Something that I see consistently... You see what the hell's going on. Yeah, I need to see what was said. Okay, pause. When he made every other girl get an abortion but wanted you to keep... Well, that's... Um. That's just... They're stupid if they went along with it, and you stupid if you stupid if you were the person who's making babies and forcing people to get abortions, and then you get pregnant by them. That's just ignorant, and that's disrespectful to yourself. <laughs> Something that Ugh. I see consistently play out throughout the behavior of narcissistic and toxic women is that they enjoy the isolation, marginalization, and trauma of other women. The internalized misogyny and toxic masculinity is drowning some narcissistic women in Now, pause. I, I will say she is pretty narcissistic. That, that girl was. Yeah. That's the thing, though, is um, there are as many narcissistic women, if not more narcissistic women, than there are narcissistic men. I know there's a lot of them out there, and the reason I say that is because there's more women in the world than there are men. men. Okay. That's statistically proven. That's just statistically proven. There are more women in the world than there are men. Narcissistic and petty little women as young girls are the ones who typically mess up young boys when they play all these mind games and stuff. So And then you, they mess up these good men for other women. Well, that's what I was about to say. It's because these boys may go in, they don't know anything about relationships, So and girls don't either. So somehow along the line, these girls totally screw these boys, uh, screws their minds up, messes with them, plays with them, plays with their emotions, plays you know, these games, these mind games with them, and it ends up uh, after you're in relationships with people who manipulate you like that, then you end up with guys who in turn, turn and, and, and do the same thing to other girls. Uh, are there narcissistic women? Absolutely. We saw Amber Heard, did we not? Mm-hmm. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I think it's starting Oh, to yay. Up. Because that video right there is not something to egotistically... Yeah. Second, second thought I was just wanting to say, and you can make your point, is there's nothing toxic about masculinity. If you are with a man, you want him to be masculine because he's the one that's going to be, you know, reaching up in the cabinets and getting shit, and he's going to be picking up the furniture and moving it around, and I would much rather a man do it than me have to do it. Did you probably fall and break it back? Oh, yeah. The, the, the thing is, is masculinity is not toxic. The only toxic masculinity I know of is, is misogynist. And typically, you yep. shouldn't date those. Nope. And if you do, then you're ignorant. That's but right. But then you're going to complain. And there are some misogynistic men out there. I'll absolutely agree to just, that. Just steer clear of them. But it's just, it's not all of them. We're going to start throwing all the men in a basket because you have a select few who are misogynist. I mean, I mean think about the good men you've seen before. Exactly. Think about the good men that's out there. They're, they're out all, there. They're all not in the same basket. They sure ain't. There's 
some good men out there. But I will say she does have a point with that woman that was being a little egotistical for all those women who have been forced to get abortion. Yeah, and she time. obviously posted the video too. So that he made all the he's got all these other girls pregnant and made them have an abortion, but he wants the baby with me. Yeah, that's 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 egotistical. Well, I, I think number one, she's a trashy person, especially for staying with a guy like that, and exactly. then knowing he's done that to other women. Yeah, and then she's proud because girl, you know he gonna leave your ass. He know you, he gonna leave you. Okay, he gonna leave you and he gonna leave the baby and he'll bring you some pampers by once a month. <laughs> First of all, pregnancy is so insidiously fantasized, romanticized, and fetishized that it's not at all a happy go. Well, I mean, it is fetishized. That's why usually people who are married typically get pregnant. You don't do that. That's the best way to do it. That, that's why you don't just get pregnant with by everybody by or, or, or intentionally try to get other women pregnant. You typically do that when you're married. That's why you shouldn't uh, fantasize it or romanticize it with people who are you don't you're not married to. Because exactly. You don't know if they're gonna stay with you. If they're you gonna or stay not. around, exactly. And if you've been married for several years, then you know that they're gonna be committed. And you can have this baby and plan for this baby or exactly. or babies if you want to have two, three, or four, or five. I mean, well, it's just... Speaking from, from, from my experience, um, I did not have her until after I'd been married for five years. Um, I just wanted to make sure he was going to stick around. And he was wanting babies after we'd been married for two years. Obviously, greater than 20 years. I don't even... I don't lost track. I, we, we were married in 1996, and now we're in, what, 2022. We've been married that long. I waited five years to see if he's going to hang around. Plus, you sort of kind of need some time to yourselves to get to know each other and have some, you know, have some personal time together because once kids come along, then you don't really have that much personal yeah, that's time why, anymore. That's why she, she, she is telling the truth. You shouldn't fetishize it. You really no. shouldn't because that's something that needs to be in a committed couple. <clears throat> but the rest of the other stuff she's saying is really sort of kind of stupid. But okay, Stupid, yeah. but yeah, going back to what she said, just don't be going out, you know, giving the sausage for free or giving the milk for free. You know, wait until you get married. I mean, it's, it's, it'll and, be and, much more appreciated. Honestly, for both parties, men and women, that's basically, you know, downgrading you as a human being. It really is. And you shouldn't do that. No, just, just wait to get right married person. to somebody. I mean, it's going to mean a whole heck of a lot more if you, like, wait for that that one true person. Instead of waiting for a bunch of narcissistic people like this woman mm -hmm. who's popped up on, you know, with this this man who's made other women get abortions. And that might be just what he's told her. Who knows? He might not have even been talking. Maybe he's a narcissist, too. I don't know. Just just wait. Instead of getting into relationships with narcissistic people like that and then for them to ruin you and then leave you with a baby or make you get an abortion, how about you just wait for the right person you exactly. know they're committed after? After a, a, exactly. several years. They're committed to you and they'll be committed to your family. I mean, you know, there is still some, some tradition you, you left in have, the world. You have to have some familial stability. You have to. And that's the way to do it. Jolly process to be pregnant. Good decision. It is literal reincarnation. So if other women got an abortion, there is nothing wrong or comedic about that. Second of all, nobody is saying that you're not special for becoming pregnant. But what I am going to say is that it is not up to you to determine the worth and value of other women based off of pregnancy. This is insidious since the beginning of time. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's true. Some women can't get pregnant. Not, 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 not what she means, but I'm saying you can't really base women's value if they can or can't get right, pregnant. Right, because there are some women who, can't. who really can't. There's, who can't there's women who are barren. There's women who may <clears throat> have a an, an ovary that doesn't work. I actually <clears throat> worked with a girl who had one ovary that did not work, and this went through, uh, she went through years of trying to get pregnant. Um, and then um, they finally found out that every other month she was fertile. So she eventually got pregnant, but it took a really, really long time. And <clears throat> there's other things that can happen to women um, fibrocystics disease, and you know, um, ovarian cancer. Ovarian thing. I mean, there's just a lot of there's different a lot things, of things that, can uh, that doesn't dehumanize a woman by any uh, stretch of the mat. That's why it's good to um, uh, have uh, adoption and it's good to not kill babies in the womb because everybody who wants a baby would like to raise their child from a baby where they can instill their their values or their beliefs on that child and it's hard to maybe get a child that's been raised by someone else who may not i mean it's 
they all need homes, obviously, but everybody wants to raise a baby up. It's, I mean, and also the thing is, is, is uh, men being unable to get women pregnant, they are no less men than mm-hmm, anybody exactly. else. I, I, I want people to stop dehumanizing people based on their bodily functions. I want people to just see them as human beings, as a man and a woman. Because mm-hmm. some men have a low sperm count mm-hmm. some of them uh have been sterilized accidentally especially if uh, a man say has been through cancer treatment it can sterilize him mm-hmm. i mean so there's some men who cannot help a woman uh make a baby and there's some women who cannot have babies like i said this is why we need adoption options for mm-hmm. people who can't do that and like i said don't dehumanize men or women because they can't get sick conceive or get another woman pregnant just exactly. just, just, just exactly. don't do that that's that's mean yeah. you are about to have a literal child a literal life coming out into this planet a precious soul about to enter such a traumatizing world this TikTok should not have even been your last concern to me it's gonna be a traumatizing world because she, this child's got two narcissistic parents <laughs> the fact that you want to drag other women down for not winning a pregnancy race is echoing more about the narcissistic yeah that is narcissistic you are embodying for all the narcissistic, toxic, and raging women of internalized misogyny and toxic masculinity, check yourselves before coming for others. So, unfortunately, instead of cringing and laughing, we ended up having a comment on everything because obviously we have opinions ourselves. There's just some mean, stinking people in the world. And I don't understand why people can't just be nice to each other because we don't know what other people are going through in their lives. You know, there's people who have had deaths in the family and there's mental health and maybe somebody's house burned down or, you know, there's just somebody maybe just lost their jobs. There's all kinds of things going on. I just don't understand why in the world people can't go beyond um, either their racist, sexist, um, political views about things and just freaking be nice to each other. I don't understand the meanness that goes on in the world. I'll never understand it. We were hoping that this was going to be a cringe or do not laugh. And then here we was, was commenting on it. So I apologize that it didn't turn out that way. But you sort of kind of got some of our opinions. Um, Whenever I listen to people say th- those types of things, I almost feel like I'm losing brain cells. <laughs> yeah, it really, you, your mind becomes jelly with some of this stuff. Maybe we can find some really good cringeworthy stuff later on. Hopefully. Uh, and hopefully we can keep our mouths shut <laughs> in order to either cringe or laugh or we can just look confused and have our brain cells die. I don't really know. Somewhere along in there. But anyway, um... We don't really like to do serious videos a whole lot, so this sort of kind of didn't turn into what we planned. But anyway, um, maybe you enjoyed it, and if you did, you could possibly give us a thumbs up, or you can leave your comments. I mean, everybody has an opinion, you know. It's like they always say, uh, assholes are like opinions. Or, no, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. There we go. Just said it backwards. But As uh, long as we can see the comments. Because like I said, sometimes we can't see them, and sometimes we can. I, I really just depends on right. you Right. Well, I think the videos that we do have the comments but the movies and the series don't I, th- I know the movies don't and that's not a me thing that's a youtube thing i've tried to cut them on but anyway feel free to leave your comments like i say everybody has an opinion and uh we don't tr- we try not to prejudge people if if we're gonna judge you it's because maybe you treated us like crap or was mean to us otherwise we accept you all um we appreciate everybody's time if you're new to our channel please check it out hopefully there's something there that you like um share our videos with friends and family and then like, again like i said a thumbs up would really be good and um i guess until our next video peace